the 18 Strong Podcast, episode number 349 with Tommy Cool, professional golfer. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the 18 Strong Podcast, where we're here to help you build a stronger game. This week, we have on Tommy Cool, recently turned professional golfer that played golf at the University of Illinois, had a great career there playing for Coach Small, and he's now transitioning over into the professional world, playing on the PGA Tour Canada. And we talk about Tommy's experience going from the collegiate game and everything that goes on there with all the resources that he has there. And then now becoming his own, basically his own business as a golfer and now having to figure out and navigate through the professional world, through the travel, through the fitness and figuring out his routines. We talked today with Tommy about some of the experiences he's already had playing in the John Deere Classic, which is his first PGA Tour event that he's ever played in. Also, a a bit of a situation that he was in in a U.S. Open qualifier where he ended up having to DQ himself. You may have heard that story and seen that on uh, the Monday Q or some of the other golf publications that put that out, where Tommy actually called a penalty on himself after shooting a course record at Illini Country Club and had to DQ himself because of a rules infraction. So we go through all of the different situations that Tommy's been in, what it's been like to transition, and it's just a great conversation with a young up-and-coming golfer that is looking to make his dreams come true on the PGA Tour. Real quick, I want to say thanks to our sponsors and partners here at 18 Strong. First is Link Soul. Link Soul is our preferred brand of apparel, and we've been working with Link Soul for a long, long time. They now not only provide our basically entire wardrobe when we're on the golf course in casual settings, but even our Ryder Cups that we have with our college buddies, all the golf trips we go on, Everybody is now wearing Link Soul in our crew, and that, that's pretty cool to see. You can go check out all of Link Soul's gear at 18strong.com slash Link Soul, and you're going to get a 20% off discount on anything in your cart if you go ahead and click the, the link right there. So go check out Link Soul. Again, they've got everything from golf apparel, shorts, hoodies, polos, button-ups, everything that you need for the golf course and beyond. 18strong.com slash Link Soul. Okay, let's get into the conversation with Tommy Cool. So are you back home right now, or are you, so, where are you? So I'm actually in Windsor, Ontario. Um, we have an event this week up here, and then um, I have two off weeks starting next week. So um, we're on a four-week stretch. This is the last one, so I'm going to finish strong. All right, sweet. So yeah, you had a good weekend last weekend, right? Yeah, I did. Yep, got back on track. Um, you know, just finally some good golf. So it felt good to put put together some rounds and you know, build off of it. Where was it, where was that event? Uh, I was in Toronto, TPC Toronto. So okay. third place awesome finish, court. right? Uh, third place, yeah. All right. So so where does that put you right now? Oh. Order of merit, and um, mm-hmm. if you could even kind of explain to people, you know, like where how the PGA tour of Canada, you know, what, what gets you to the next step and what's your, what are you really looking for? Yeah. So, um, basically, you know, PGA tour Canada, you're playing for the top five, you know, top five on the money list or the points list, I should say, gets your corn Ferry tour card at the end of the season. And we're on week, I believe it's six right now, six or seven. Um, and, uh, I, Last week, you know, helped me a lot. Um, this tour is very top heavy with points, um, first through third. So, um, I made a clutch birdie on hole 17, which bumped me up to solo third. Um, got me a lot of points and, you know, I moved up, I think 46 spots and I'm, oh, I'm wow. in 19, 19th right now. So, um, I was outside the top 60, you know, didn't play my best golf, you know, early this season, but, you know, felt good to finally get a good finish and, um, like I said, just going to keep building off of it and carry that momentum into this week. Nice. So, um, so you said there's four weeks left. Is that right? Uh, yes, this week and then three more after this. So, okay. so a couple, a couple good finishes could uh, could pop you up towards the top there, and and then that you said the top five order merit goes to Corn Ferry Tour, right? Correct. Okay. I believe 
first place gets their full corn cherry card and then two through five get conditional status so that should get you in the first couple events of next season so um you know just you know that that's the goal for everyone up here and a lot of guys up here are playing for top 25 on the order of merit which gets you into second stage of corn cherry qualifying but um i'm actually already exempt in the second stage through you know the new pga tour university um, okay. system okay well uh, so yeah explain that a little bit to us uh, so well i want to get into you know your time at illinois and mm-hmm. you know, obviously that's that's what kind of got you to where you are you having a really strong year last year at, at illinois uh pga tour university which i was just talking to uh our buddy justin barger who is now working with pga tour university and um, I know that you know him very, very well. It sounds like you actually saw him today. Uh, but Correct, yeah. Tell us a little bit about, like, how does PJ Tour University, what does that do? How does that work? Because that's kind of a fairly new thing, right? Yes. Um, I want to say it's three years three years old. Um, they started, you know, three years ago, they, they made this new PJ Tour University, and it gives, um, you know, college seniors, you know, you stay in school, um, and you play for, for the rankings. So um, they go off world, world amateur golf ranking points, Wagger, um, you know, and it only counts for college events and uh, PGA Tour events. So um, based on how you play in college tournaments, you know, the number of Wagger points you get based on the finish, and that, that goes into the system. So, um, you know, obviously, like everything, the better you play, you know, the higher up you'll be. So, um you know, there's there's not much to it. You know, play good golf and you'll you'll be up on these rankings. And so the top spots at PJ Tour University, um, do they get their tour card? And then some guys go Corn Ferry. What is, yes, that break down? yes. So they they're making changes always to it. But um, this was the first year that number one on PJ Tour U got his PJ Tour card. Um, this stud by the name of Ludwig Aber went to Texas Tech. Um, had a heck of a college career, and, and um, you know, he gained his full PGA Tour card, and, and he's off and running. He's killing yeah. it right now. And um, and then 2 through 10 get um, Corn Ferry status. I think 2 through 5 get their Corn Ferry Tour card, and then 6 through 10 get conditional status, I believe. Um, and then 11 through 20 get uh, full status on PGA Tour Canada. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I yeah. Was, as I was texting with uh, Justin today, we're going to hopefully bring him on the show too so he can kind of go a little deeper into what PJ Tour University is and, and really the whole program behind it. And, and yeah, doing he, uh, game. It's, it's funny you brought it up. I Like you said, I actually saw him today. Um, I know he's traveling to events. You know, I think that's his new role, just going to events, learning more about, you know, what it's like up here and and, you know, this, this game, um, you know, professional golf, amateur golf, it's always changing. And, um, you know, it was great to see him today. And obviously he has a better better idea of what's going on in PGA Tour University. But um, what a platform for college players. You know, it, it's, um, it makes players stay in college, you know, work for something and, and have a job out of, out of college. You know, I was talking to him today. I was like, you know, if I just graduated, you know, two months ago, what would I be doing now? Probably just chasing the mini tours and, you know, PGA Tour University gave me the opportunity to come up here and, you know, get a jump start professional golf. Yeah, so at the end of this season, Canadian Tour, if by chance you do not make it in that top five, are there other tournaments that you'll then be like looking to play in the interim before you get to, you know, next year's Canadian Tour or or Corn Ferry Tour going through Q School and things like that? what are the other avenues that you can then take even just to, to earn paychecks and make money? Cause I mean, I know everybody out there is, you know, you guys aren't rolling in, in the dough like the PJ tour guys. Uh, you know, people think PJ tour Canada, they think that sounds really, really big, but I know that, you know, it's a struggle to, to get out there, stay out there, make money and, and make all the ends meet when you're traveling, you know, how many weeks a year. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm sure, you know, like, like I said, I'm, I'm new to this, so I, I'm learning as I go, but, um, I've heard, you know, the guys up here who've been out here um, grinding it out have said there's some pretty good mini tour events during the off season, you know, down in Florida. I know there's a minor league golf tour down there. And then um, out west, there's a new tour called the Asher Tour. 
Um, and they provide, you know, players with good opportunities to play and some decent purses. So I'm sure during the off season, you know, I'll, I'll um, sign up for a couple of those and just stay fresh. And, and for me, more than anything, I, w- I want to be out playing more than practicing. Obviously, practice is important, but I think to go out and test your game. And um, that's that's where I see, you know, the um, biggest improvement in my game is going out and, and actually doing it. So I'm sure I'll play in those and, um, you know, see, see if that prepares me for Q school. I'm sure it will. What have been some of the biggest changes for you switching from, you know, you're, you're playing at one of the most elusive collegiate organizations at Illinois University. You know, you've got all tons of resources there. You've got crazy practice facilities. You've got an incredible coach. You have all of these different uh, things at your disposal. And now you're a business. You are Tommy Cool Incorporated, right? Like you're, exactly. you're now looking to, to make your ends meet and, and make your way onto the tour. What have been some of the biggest changes and, and were you prepared for some of these? Uh, obviously, you have a lot of guys you can lean on that have taken that step too. It's been a huge learning experience for me, even these first six weeks. You know, it's, I mean, I'm playing for money now, which is one thing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's golf. You know, you still got to go out and produce scores, but um, playing for money and just the travel, that's one thing I've learned is just, you know, how expensive the travel is as a professional golfer and, and you know, how hard the travel is on your body, um, you know, physically, um, how hard that can be. And, and I mean, I went through a stretch there, um, you know, where I wasn't playing great golf either. And, and it's hard on you mentally as well. You know, you're, you're not making anything when you miss the cuts and, and, and it's hard. So you just got to find a balance, um, you know, mentally and, and just keep going. So like I said, just a huge learning experience and I'm learning every single day I'm out here. You know, it's, it's good to have guys I know out here who have, who've been through it. And I was obviously coach small and a lot of the line I alums, you know, I lean on them for support, but, um, you know, I think more than anything, you just got to enjoy it. Yeah, all of us up here in Canada probably don't want to be, this isn't where we want to be, you know, playing for the rest of our lives, but you got to find a way to enjoy it and, um, you know, enjoy the grind of it and, uh, you know, keep that end goal of making the PGA Tour and winning on the PGA Tour in the back of your mind. Have you had a chance to head home at all during this stretch? Um, I know you had a couple tournaments which we'll get to in, in a little bit you had a big tournament that you went and played in some qualifiers and stuff we'll touch on that but have you actually had a chance to like do you get a, week, a couple weeks off or, or a week off in between it's been pretty constant going you know i've tried straight from this college season we had regionals nationals and then um i actually had the opportunity to p- represent the united states in the arnold palmer cup so i went straight from nationals to arnold palmer cup and then straight from Arnold Palmer Cup to Canada. So I've been I've been on the road. I th- I want to say this is my tenth week in a row. Um, sprinkled in one day at home in there um, when I got the opportunity to play in the PGA Tour event. Um, but man, it's just the constant grind. You know, it's it's hard. Not a lot of time at home, which you know is hard. But um, like I said, you just got to enjoy and embrace the the travel. Who are a few of the guys that you've been able to, to, you know, kind of reach out to? Obviously, you've got some PJ Tour guys that went through Illinois. Um, and what's some of the advice that they've maybe given you regarding this big change in the travel mm-hmm. and all the different things that you're going through? Well, I said I, I, I would say the biggest person I've leaned on is Coach Small. Um, obviously, he's been a huge role model for me. Um, he's someone I look up to and someone I respect a ton and and he's been through it. I think that's why you see the program have so much success and um, it's because of him. Um, He's been through it. He's been through the professional golf grind and, and I found myself calling him a lot, you know, just, just reaching out to him. It's always good to hear his voice. And um, the biggest thing he keeps telling me is, you know, this is what you work for. This is what you've wanted um, to play professional golf. And, just more than anything, go out and enjoy it. You know, I think that's one thing with golf that sometimes players can get wrapped up in is, um, yeah, it's hard on you sometimes. It's very hard, but you just got to find a way to enjoy it, enjoy the challenge of, you know, being up here, um, competing, um, you know, and just really embrace everything. So take me back to your Illinois game. So you were 
you were there five years, right? So Correct. what did that trajectory look like? I know you and I had a chance to actually work together a little bit before you went to Illinois. So it's been really mm -hmm. cool to be able to follow you and keep up with, you know, what's going on in your career. And so from the time you got to Illinois, give us a little bit of a highlight reel, Tommy Cool highlight reel of, you know, where things started, um, how, what it was like going there, knowing you're going into this huge program. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a huge honor that, and it showed that you had tremendous talent going in. When you got there, was there a little bit of shell shock or did you feel like you fit right in, fit into the family? And then how did those next five years kind of play out? Yeah, so, you know, as a, as a junior golfer from Central Illinois, it was always a dream of mine to go play for the University of Illinois and coach coach Small. You know, as a kid, I remember going to the Illinois golf camps with, with my brother and, um, you know, getting to know Coach Small and, um, you know, get familiarity with, you know, the, the university, the campus, the facilities. So, um, you know, I always told my parents this was – that's what I wanted was that's what I wanted to work for is getting a scholarship to play for coach in the University of Illinois and you know I had a decent junior career um committed very early I think I committed my sophomore freshman year of high school so um you know had a decent junior career won the state high school championship twice and um you know going into my freshman year it, it was a wake-up call you know I got got there my freshman year and I didn't I didn't know anything. That's that's one way to put it. I thought I did um, as a young player, and, and I didn't. I had such a big learning curve, you know, to figure out. And, um, you know, it took me a while to, to learn as, as a selfish junior, thinking he knows everything, you know. And, and as I started to mature and, and as I got older in the university and um, in the program, um, I started to see results and, um, you know, more or less just, just listening to coach and, and what he preaches. So when did you really start to get into the rotation of, of playing there? Um, how many guys are on the actual squad? And then how many play in the individual events? Yeah, so we, uh, so golf teams usually have around, I would say, 8 to 12 people um, on the team. Uh, coach usually keeps our team around 8 to 10. So um, kind of fluctuated in that number of people um through my time there and um freshman year i didn't play much in the lineup um obviously in college events you have let's say 10 guys on the team um and you do qualifying when you get there and, and throughout the year to see who's in the lineup um five play in the lineup and then depending on the tournament um coach might have the opportunity to take a few individuals and those individuals you know don't get to play you know for the team success basically you're just there playing um by yourself which um that was me a lot of my freshman and sophomore year you know i had a few opportunities to be in the lineup um and it was a huge huge learning experience for me um but um actually my freshman year um i didn't play the big 10 championship um and then one of our our fifth guy got hurt right before regionals and I got subbed in for regionals and then we made it through and I got in the lineup for nationals as well. So, um, that was really the first time I was in the lineup and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's hard, man. It's just, you know, it's, it's hard to make the lineup at a program like that. It's, um, we got to bring it every day. And, um, that's one thing I learned. What were some, some of the biggest successes that you guys had both as a team and then, you individually uh, in your five years at? So as a team, um, we made it to the national championship three out of the four years. Obviously, COVID year, they didn't, that season got cut short, but um, we made nationals three out of the four years. We, or sorry, nationals, yeah, three out of the four years, and then we made match play in nationals two out of the three years we were in. Um, and that was probably, you know, the biggest stage of golf i've been in in college or even amateur golf um so that was really fun um you know just getting to chase that national championship with a group of guys you know that's what you work for all year and um you know we we uh gave it all we had came up short but um definitely definitely a very cool experience and then individually you know i never won in college that was always my goal is to you know get that individual win um 
obviously for me, I was more focused on the team success, but you do want to see individual results, but, um, you know, had a couple runner ups, but, but never got that win. So still searching for it. <laughs> so I know that, um, you know, you had a, a very successful last year. Um, I, w- I was told to ask you, which are you more proud of be- being a first team all American or an academic all American? And I think oh, you know man. where that question came from. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. I man, school school for me was always hard. So it, it's it's an honor to get the academic all American. To be honest, I I honestly put in a lot of work towards school, and and to see you know see me get that award is is pretty special. And I know it means a lot to me and my family. But um, you know, first team all American is also a very big big honor to have. And um, you know, honestly, if you would have told me I would have been a first team all-american my freshman year i don't know if i would have believed you um you know i always dreamed of it you know as a junior golfer and obviously in college and that's what you work for but um man i i i really don't think i it it, was just a lot of hard work honestly and um you know very special year what was that balance like school obviously you put a lot of time and effort into your school work but then i mean playing golf at, at a division one school like Illinois, it's many people equated to a full-time job. And so how, what was it like to balance those things out? And, and what processes or routines did you find that were most beneficial to help you do that? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. And, and I would say one thing that helped me more than anything is just the resources that the university of Illinois offers to student athletes, um, specifically golf. Um, we have, um, an athletic academic counselor, um, Sherry Clapp. I don't know if she'll, she'll listen to this, but big shout out to her because she, she helps our team, you know, more than anything of just staying organized and, and making, you know, enrolling for classes and just in just adjustment to college very easy. So having her was a huge advantage. And, um, you know, I can equate my academic success to her. Um, but, you know, just a, one thing with golf too is is tournaments. You're gone for four or five days at a time. You know during a week when you're traveling for tournaments, so um, you're missing class. You know you're doing homework on the road. Um, whereas other sports, let's say football or basketball, you're gone for you know a night or two. You know so um, that was one of the biggest things. I learned is just staying organized, um, communicating with your professors and, and finding, finding the balance of when, when to practice golf and when to study. So, um, I always, I, I got into a very good routine in college, um, and, uh, just stuck with me. Is it, is it nice now that you don't have all the classes and everything that you have to take? I mean, I, I would assume you probably feel like you had some more free time in order to, to put the time into your training, your practice, those kind of things. And have you still maintained a pretty solid, like regimented routine? Or do you find yourself almost being like, well, I've got more time and, and trying to figure out how to really piece those things together to really get your, your plan together for the future. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause honestly, that's the, that's the thing I'm trying to focus on right now and learn is what's my routine. And, and obviously it depends where you're at um up here in canada it's hard to get into routine because um for me um i know you focus on the fitness side of golf but but that's been very important for me in my routine and how i feel physically and mentally um so i'm trying to find a routine that works good for me and and working out you know nutrition um golf practice and then my free time the free time is the biggest the biggest thing I'm trying to learn is just what am I going to do to fill that free time? Cause you have a lot of it up here. Um, and lucky to have a lot of guys up here to be doing things with, but, um, you know, I think having a, having a routine is probably the most important thing. And if, and if you talk to a lot of professional golfers, they'll say the same. What does your, your fitness routine kind of look like right now? Obviously you guys don't have the, the same kind of resources that the PJ tour do. Do you have any kind of a trail or anything, or is it more local gyms that you guys have access to those type of things? Correct. Yeah. Um, the PJ tour Canada actually gives us 
Um, they'll have like three gyms a week, um, maybe one that we have access to. Um, but usually uh, those are to the guy. I mean, I, I'm able to use them, but a lot of guys do Airbnbs. Um, I've been doing hotels, so I've been just working out in, in the hotel gym. Um, obviously, they're not the best resources for from the fitness side of things, but, um, you know, I, I'm easy. I kind of just find a way to, you know, get my body moving, and, and I like to just focus on more the mobility side of things at, right now. Um, I do a lot of stretching and mobility before I work out or, you know, maybe the Monday of, of, of the week just to after travel, I like to get my body moving, the blood flowing, and, um, um, you know, just like I said, just trying to find that routine, which what works best for me. When you guys were at Illinois, um, was the, the physical training a big part of your your season, or was that more you know prior to? Because obviously in season you're traveling a lot, but um, I assume you have a dedicated strength coach or trainer mm-hmm. that's that's helping you guys up there. Yeah, so we actually worked out, I want to say three times in the off season. Um, we were in the gym ma- mandatory, um, and then in season we were two days a week. But uh, for me, those were the um, strength days. So I, I would go in I would four or five times a week um, on the other days and just get mobility work in, get some cardio work in. And for me, um, as I mentioned, just the routine of it, I I feel best mentally when I get in, you know, that rhythm of waking up early, you know, going to the gym, and then I'm able to go to class and practice. So um I just like to stick to stick to what I, what I like and what I know. So, well, it, it's working so far. So, <laughs> just keep dialing in that routine. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a little break here to thank our partners over at Live Pure. Live Pure is a hydration product that you are going to want to have in your golf bag, in your gym bag, because it's going to handle anything that you need when it comes to your hydration. It's got the electrolytes you need. It's going to help replenish your system on the hot, muggy days, which we're already starting to have here a little bit in St. Louis. But they've got the energy, they've got the hydrate, and they've got the recovery. They're going to handle everything that you need, whether you're on the golf course, you're in the gym, you're sweating it out. You want to make sure that you have Live Pure in your bag. All you have to do is tear open one of the pre-made little packs, dump it right in with the water, and you're set. They've got incredible flavors, including making blue raspberry a flavor for all of the products. They've got you covered. So go to livepure.com. That's L-I-V-P-U-R.com. Use the code 18STRONG to get your discount on every order that you place and use LivePure to champion your day. I want to I talk to you. Uh, you had a little bit of uh, 15 minutes of fame recently. With Well, a couple of times, actually. Um, one was a bit of a, a situation that I think many people applauded you for in the U.S. Open qualifier. So take me back to to that event at Illini Country Club. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Correct, um, yeah. So you, you shoot a course record in a, a qualifi- U.S. Open qualifier, and uh, you take the story from there. Yeah, so, you know, um, U.S. Open local qualifying each year, it's obviously every golfer's dream to make the U.S. Open and, and compete, you know, for a spot in that prestigious field. And um, I had to go through the local process of it. And um, me and a couple of teammates drove up there and, um, you know, played a great round of golf. I shot bogey-free nine under, um, my best round of the year. And thought I thought I had it. I thought I was thought I was in. Um, one of my roommates was actually in a playoff to get the the last spot, and me and a couple of teammates were walking, following him. And and I just mentioned to the guys like how hard it was to to putt on the aerated greens. You know, the Midwest didn't have a good good uh, spring as far as weather, so a lot of the greens in the area weren't healed fully, um, and there were a few. Or the greens were aerated and they they weren't filled in yet. The um, and uh, I I mentioned to one of my teammates how hard it was to to putt on the aerated greens and and he mentioned but yeah it was hard because you couldn't fix them and at that moment I honestly I it was the worst feeling ever because I throughout the day I was fixing them and and um, didn't know the rule I didn't know you know, with, with the new rule changes that you can, 
you know, fix spike marks, tap down spike marks. Um, I thought you could fix them, obviously, and, and you couldn't. And um, I went to a rules official, told him kind of what, what I was doing throughout the day and um, ultimately ended up DQing myself. So um, very unfortunate, you know, but I, I tell people when they ask me, you know, it, it comes down to me like nothing on the course, nothing on the rules official, nothing on the tournament. Um, I, I'm a golfer. This is what I do for a living. I should know the rules, you know? So, um, it falls, falls on me. Um, yeah, it's probably not the best, best rule, but that's golf. That's life. So, um, definitely learn from it. I can't imagine that moment when that light bulb went off in your head and you're like, just that sinking feeling of, oh man. And I mean, I think myself, I, I remember sending you a text and like, I'm sure you got so many messages from other people like that, just the integrity of that moment speaks so highly of your, your personality, um, but also just the game of golf itself, right? And that's, that's probably one of the reasons why you love this game, why so many of us love this game. Um, and the fact that you did that, I'm sure you got a lot of messages from people uh, applauding that move. Um, you obviously got a lot of, you know, had several articles written about it. What was that like um, social media wise? Did you get a lot of people reaching out to you and uh, different interviews and things like that? Yeah, I got so many people reaching out. It was almost very overwhelming. And it was at a time right before we were starting um, regionals. So, um, you know, I had to shy away a couple interviews just because it was almost too much. And, and, and I was focused on the team and, and making it to the national championship and, and winning the national championship. So, um, you know, I, I answered a lot of people, but I kind of just put it past me after a few days. And, and I was just like, you know, it happened. It's in the past and, and let's move on. But, um, you know, I did have a lot of people reaching out and and just, you know, sending their thoughts to me. Um, I, and I, and I told everyone it's, it's life, right? right? Like it's on me. What's, um, definitely going to learn from it. That's awesome. And not only was it a, uh, nine under round, that was a course record there, right? It was. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't know if they kept it or not, but in my heart, in my head, I, I, <laughs> I had the course it. record there. <laughs> Had you ever played there before? Uh, yeah, I've played there a couple times. Gotcha. Yeah, and, and it's a great course. And one thing with the media that I just was a little frustrated with was just a lot of it was towards a line at Country Club and, and oh, they shouldn't be aerating their greens. Well, well, the matter of the fact is every course has to aerate their greens for them to be healthy, you know. Right. It just, it was unfortunate, you know. It, all the courses in the area had the same same problem, so... Um, nothing on the line at Country Club. Great course, um, great venue for a local qualifier. So, so then, not too long after that, really, uh, you had another pretty cool opportunity to play in your first. Was this your first PGA Tour event, the John Deere Classic? Correct. Yeah, first one. And so, how did that transpire? How did how did you get into the the John Deere? So, um, the John Deere Classic does a great job of giving you know, young guys right out of college opportunities, you know, to play, um, make, make their first PJ tour start. Obviously Jordan Spieth, he was, he was a winner at the John Deere classic as a young gun. And, um, you know, there's been handful of Illinois guys that have gotten the opportunity to play in the John Deere classic and, and start their pro career. So, you know, starting the year, that was one of my goals that I, I had was, potentially get the sponsors exemption in the John Deere Classic. And I, and I knew that I had to, you know, play well to get it. It wasn't just going to be like, I'm a local kid. They're, you know, hopefully they give it to me. I, I wanted to earn it. And, um, you know, after I had a really good fifth year um, at the University of Illinois, I, I sent in a letter and, um, you know, um, they they got back to me two weeks before the tournament. And, and um, it was pretty special moment for for me and my caddy set uh set the scene for us a little bit when you got there what were the nerves like what was what did it feel like um you know and then tell us a little bit about how you played out there and how you feel like mm -hmm. you you performed on that stage um 
it was an incredible week. Obviously, it was my first PGA Tour event, so I didn't really know what to expect, and I and I didn't have many expectations going into the week. But um, I actually missed the cut in Canada the week before. Um, so if I were to make the cut, which obviously I, I'm never planning to miss the cut or or hope for that, but it was almost a blessing in disguise of of travel and getting there and just just the run I was on with tournaments, it, it almost worked out perfect that I could get down to Silvis, um, Quad Cities area on Sunday night. Um, played nine holes on Sunday um, and then practice around Monday, Tuesday and then right into the tournament. So, um, you know, what what a week. Um, you know, a PGA Tour event. I, I quickly learned that this is the lifestyle I want to live and, you know, it's, it's always going to be in the back of my mind, just being there and with the with the fans and how tour events are set up. That's that's what's going to keep pushing me, you know, to to make it there. And um, I'm glad I got the opportunity to compete to compete there and um, just you know, and, and the support I had. It's it was an hour and twenty minutes from my hometown um, in Central Illinois, and the amount of people I had out there supporting me, it was um, you know pretty special. It just kind of put in. It, put everything into perspective of kind of how, how lucky I am to first off be playing this game, but also how many people there are behind me supporting me and, um, you know, helping me reach my goal. And so unfortunately you didn't make the cut, but how do you yep. feel like you played? How do you feel like you, you stacked up to the competition out there? Um, yeah. So I shot one under the first round, even the second round, um, looking at the stats, I want to say I was, I, I think I was eight strokes gained approach, um, which is a crazy good stat, which is not good given the fact I didn't make the cut, which means I didn't make many putts, um, which I didn't. Um, that was frustrating. But, um, you know, I felt like I played fairly well tee to green, um, and, I, and I felt pretty comfortable out there. Obviously, the first tee nerves were there and, and just getting comfortable out there. Um, but... You know, I felt like I belonged. It, it was it was a pretty cool feeling, almost an addictive feeling, being out there, and um, just what an incredible experience. What would you say are the big strengths of your game? And then, are there any things that being out there that you kind of saw throughout the couple of days? Like, this is what I really need to work on, or that I, you see these guys doing this or that. And you know, we talked about the process and routine. Are there certain things that you took away from that that? You know, like, all right, this is where I got to kind of step up. This is where I'm, I'm actually pretty darn good. Uh -huh. So um, I, my strengths are always ball striking. I've always been a really, really good ball striker to the green and um, great long iron player, great driver of the golf ball. But I learned if you want to compete out there, make cuts, make make a living, it, it all comes down to short game. And, and Coach Small has preached that to me for five years and, and – um, you know, I'm still working on it. You know, that's that's the biggest thing I learned out there is, is everyone can hit the ball, you know, far, straight. It comes down to, you know, short game, uh, wedges, um, getting up and down, making making putts, and, and not a lot of stuff people see. Everyone gets goes crazy about the 350-yard drives someone hit, but they don't look at the small things that, that it takes to win out there. And, um, you know, moving forward, I think that's the biggest thing I need to work on if I want to compete out there. Yeah, I mean, we just saw what last week at the Open Championship, Ryan Harmon, I mean, his putter was just lights out. Incredible, right? I mean, incredible. The guy just played solid golf from tee to green and made a bunch of putts. Yep, that's what it comes down to. Is And, and I think if you look at each week, um, the statistics on the guys who went out there, they're going to be top 10 in putting. It, it all comes down to putting, um, especially – you know, with the scores they're shooting now, it's 20 plus under to win. And, and you just got to be making putts. You can't be shooting those scores and, and not making them. What are a couple putting drills that you can give the 18 strong crew that, that you're working on or even short game stuff? I mean, do you have, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have tons of games you play. Any good ones that are pretty simple, simple to describe and that anybody can go out to their own local putting green and do? Well, the biggest thing I'm trying to learn with putting and, and talking to people just, just out on tour and, and coaches, um, making putting as athletic as possible. You know, nowadays with, with coaching and stuff, um, people can get so technical with 
putting, you know, where the putter's aimed, how my stroke is, what's the perfect stroke. Well, the matter of fact is everyone's going to be stroking it different. You, you look at some of the best putters on tour, they don't do it conventionally at all, you know. Um, so right now for me, focusing on, you know, I use a chalk line. That's, that's one drill I like for my alignment with my putter face, um, you know, wh- where I feel comfortable alignment-wise. Um, and just starting the ball in line. So I like to do that before, you know, I tee off, you know, the days leading up to the tournament. Um, but other than that, just picking a target and reacting to that. Got it's it. just like, you know, people people make the um, the comparison to shooting a free throw. You know, it's essentially the same thing. You have your routine, um, you know, and, and do that every time and, and having no expectations when you putt. Speaking of coaching, um, you know, growing up, did you have a coach that you worked with a long time? Do you still, are you still working with a coach? What, what does that look like, especially with you traveling and everything? Everything's a little bit more remote these days. Um, where are you there? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've worked with a bunch of people, you know, a couple of guys, obviously Brian Fote, who, who you know, and uh, St. Louis guy, B. Fote's the man. And, you know, I still am in very good contact with um, B. Fote and, um, you know, Whenever I'm down in St. Louis, I love to go see him, and, and he helps me a lot um, with my golf swing, and he, and he did growing up. But, um, you know, not really working with anyone fully. You know, there's there's a couple guys in the Champaign area um, that have helped me. Obviously, Coach Small and and some some guys, um, Chris Harder at Urbana Country Club has, has helped, me, helped me a lot with my golf swing. But um, I'm more of a field player. You know, I don't like to get too technical in my golf swing, so um, – kind of just figure it out when, when I'm struggling by myself. And, uh, yeah, I know, I mean, Coach Small obviously has a wealth of knowledge. Does he get into much instruction with you guys, or do a lot of the guys already have their own coaches that they're working with? And is it that a bit of a balance there? Yeah, so um, a lot of the guys come into school with swing coaches that they've, they've worked with their whole life. Um, and and he, he jumps in when, when he – when the when a player asks him to, um, I wouldn't say he he forces himself in there, but he does a lot of coaching on the short game side of things, chipping. Um, he's very knowledgeable with that, and obviously the full swing too. He knows more than I can even even wrap my head around. But um, you know, like I said, he's not going to tell you something if if he doesn't think it's going to help you. So I think he honestly balances it perfect with his players. Um, of when to help him with fundamentals and stuff like that. I know he's a big, he's really big on process. We had Dylan Meyer on the show a while back and, and he talked a lot about how you know, coach small is so big on process pro- and falling in love with the process. Right. Um, knowing that he's, he's coaching all of these different athletes that have their own personal coaches. What would you say is his biggest role and, and where does he shine as far as, you know, honestly, he's one of the top coaches of all time in, in collegiate golf. What, what are the things that make it him so special and make that program so special? I think the biggest thing about coach and what makes him so good is just how competitive he is. You know, I think in any sport, that's what it takes is just that competitive side, that competitive fire and, um, you know, just going out there, giving it your all. And, and one thing I tell people is he sets the culture. He sets a very high standard in the culture of the University of Illinois and and he, he recruits players who buy in, you know, if it's, you know, how we work in the weight room, how we work in our studies, how we treat people, how we go about our business, um, how we play golf, we're going to, he holds us to a high standard. And if we're not doing it well, we're going to, we're going to hear about it. So um, I think that's what makes him, him so good um, from a mental side of things. And just, it's not just golf. It, 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 you you know, it's, it's everything. It's, it's how you carry yourself. And, um, you know, as, as soon as I started to realize that I started to see results and it's crazy. You don't even, you don't even know it. And, and you're playing better golf and you're like, you know, but it, it's crazy. I, I wouldn't trade my experience at the university of Illinois for anything. You know, he, he's the best coach in the country for a reason. And, um, I think, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough about him. 
and, and his, his role in, in my success. What about goal setting? So going into your season, maybe this, this is something you guys did at, at Illinois as well and, and it kind of built on. Are you one of those kind of guys that sets goals specifically for yourself? I know, you know, year in, year out, we'll see Justin Thomas every now and then post like what his goals for the year were and, and whether mm-hmm. he, he made them or didn't make them. Is that kind of a process that you go through or is yours a little more loose or a little more tight and strategic? How do you go through that? And, and maybe what are the goals for uh, the end of this season and even looking into 24? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm always goal oriented. Um, you know, I, I set my goals very high. Um, I think anyone should. Um, but, um, you know, in college, I, I obviously set my goals um, very high of, of playing well, you know, a couple awards that I wanted to win, obviously first team All-American, um, you know, team goals, win a national championship, stuff, stuff like that. But I, I like to focus on process goals. I think those are, are what are almost more important. You know, what what can I do to better myself to, to reach those goals? So um, I, I'd say the process goals are something I like to focus on on more. Can you give us an example of what that might look like? Yeah, so, for example, let's say, um, you know, short game or putting. Um, statistically, you know, we track our stats. Let's say my putting stats weren't all that I wanted. So um, a process goal for me would be, you know, so many three or four footers a day. Let's, you know, focus on alignment, you know, speed, um, things like that. And ultimately, you know, hopefully if you do the right things and those process goals, um, it'll work out in the end goal. So. Um, just, just little things like that. And then any, anything in regard to, um, you know, how many tournaments you're going to play a year, where are you going to be at the end of 24, or is it simply more, as long as I stick to the process, as long as I'm doing the things, you know, in the gym, on the practice screen, on the drive range, on the golf course, I know that 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 stuff will come. Yeah. You know, as I'm, as I've turned professional, you know, obviously I'm setting my goals the same that I did in college, you know, obviously I want to focus on PGA Tour Canada, what I can do up here and, and getting top five on the points list, getting my Quentin Ferry Tour card and, and um, you know, just going from there. I think right now, you know, obviously I have the end goal of making the PGA Tour and, and winning on the PGA Tour, but I, I need to focus on now and, and that's PGA Tour Canada. So I'm um, kind of just focusing on each week, what I can do, you know, the little things that we talked about and, and my process goals each week out here that coach preached to me every day and just focusing on those things. And, and I know if I, if I do those every day, um, you know, give it my all, um, you know, at least I can look back and be like, you know, at least I did the right things. Great answer. All right, buddy, we're going to wrap it up with some of the questions we ask everybody that comes on the show. So mm-hmm. first one, I want to know, you know, you're obviously a different generation than I am. Are you more of a candy shack guy or more of a happy Gilmore guy? Happy Gilmore, happy Gilmore guy. <laughs> Is that one that you have on repeat? Like, do you guys, as a team, did you ever watch any of those kind of movies? We, we turn it on here and there, but, you know, I, I, I honestly, I haven't seen it too much. Um, but, you know, I'll, I always get a good laugh out of Adam Sandler and some of his lines in, in, in that movie. All right, if you could pick a walk-up song to the first tee box, what's, what's your walk-up song? I, I got to go with Country, Morgan Wong, huge Morgan Wong guy, um, his new album. Uh, Sunrise, you know, PGA Tour Canada asked me the same question, and I gave him the same answer. Um, his new song, Sunrise, it's a perfect vibe for me and, and, and my Midwest, you know, so. Are you, uh, are you a music on the golf course kind of guy when you're out with your buddies, or are you a little bit more laced up? I'm not a big music. I, I love music, but once I'm on the course, I think kind of just the peace and quiet of being out there and hearing the, you know, sound of the club hitting the ball and just kind of everything around you, that, that's big for me. So I don't really like listening to music on the course. Is there a book that you've read uh, that has kind of inspired you or really given you some insights and something that you might recommend that other people in the 18th Strong Crew check out? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm trying to get into reading more. Um, you know, I think it's a big thing, and, and I always love learning. One of one of the books, you know, I think a lot of golfers have read, and one that helped me a lot is Golf is Not a Game of Perfect. Um, you know, it's by Bob Rotella, one of the most famous sports psychologists, and 
such an easy read for a golfer wanting, you know, to get better and strive to be better. And um, he just gives you a good insight on, you know, the mental side of the game. Uh, some of, some he, he draws connections between some of the best players in the world, um, kind of what goes through their head. And, you know, and I think the title is, just says it all. Golf is not a game perfect, and it's not. So um, great read, and, and I'd recommend it to any golfer. All right, if you could pick a dream foursome, and this could be celebrities, this could be influential figures, um, but basically a foursome that you would love to go spend four or five hours with, kind of pick their brains and learn from, or just spend the time with, who's that? Um, I'd have to go Tiger Woods, just true competitor. Um, you know, obviously one of the greatest to ever do it. Um, you know, he, I'd have to throw him in there. Um, Patrick Mahomes, um, quarterback, new, new documentary out on Netflix. It's quarterback. I don't know if you, you've seen it yet, but I haven't seen um, it yet. No, I I've heard, I'd I've heard good things. I'd check it out. Um, after watching that, I got to throw him in there because, it's crazy to just see the type of competitor he is too and how bad he he wants it, how high he sets his goals, how high his standard is. Um, so, you know, definitely throw him in there. And then um, I'd throw Michael Jordan in there as well. He's all, you know, true competitors. That's what you want. A, a solid group of highly, yeah. highly competitive dudes. That's for Yeah, sure. exactly. All right, is there a bucket list course that if I told you, Tommy, we're, we've got the 18 strong G4 fueled up. We're ready to go. We're coming to pick you up. What golf course are we going to? Um, I'd say Pine Valley out east in New Jersey. Um, I, I love that style of golf. That's like, you know, obviously Chicago has some of the best golf in the world, and so does, you know, the east part um, of the country. So um, I'd say Pine Valley never played it. Always been a dream of mine to play there. So, if you had the jet fueled up, um, I'd say, Jeff, we're, we're heading out there to, for a quick 18. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. What's the best piece of golf advice you've ever been given? Um, you know, Coach Law always says golf owes you nothing. You know, I think you got to go out and you got to earn it each and every day. Um, and, and that's something that's, that's stuck with me is, you know, um, and it's true, golf does owe me nothing. I got to go put in the work each and every day, and and um, you know, kind of create my own blueprint of what um, you know my story is going to look like, and and how how I'm going to get there. So, um, you know, I'm just I think that's that's one thing that's that's stuck with me. And last one: Is there a, a social media account? Could be golf, could be fitness, could be kind of anything that you follow that you think is worth the 18th row crew checking out. Um, I'd say one really cool social media account, um, you know, that I follow is Monday Q info. I don't know if oh, you yeah. follow them on, on Twitter, but, um, you know, I think they gave a group, the guy gives a great insight of what professional golf's like, what mini tour life's like, what, um, you know, any professional golf tournaments like, you know, some of the stories you see, um, from his content is, is pretty cool. And he just gives you a great, um, you know, kind of overview on, on professional golf. Yeah. Ryan's, uh, he breaks a lot of the stories that end up coming out stories like yours, you know, from mm -hmm. those kind of tournaments that don't get the, the publicity that might from a, a golf magazine or golf digest or something, but then, you know, he's able to put it out because he's got the inside track. So totally. Yeah. And, and, right. and, so, and to hear some of the stories of just guys who, you know, who don't have, have much and who grind it out and get the opportunity to play and take advantage of it. It's pretty cool just to see, you know, some of the stories. For sure. All right, buddy, where can everybody go to, to find you, follow your journey? Obviously the 18 strong crew is going to be uh, backing and supporting you as you move forward and looking forward to you making it on the PJ tour. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, social media, I'm on social media, Instagram, Twitter, but hopefully, you know, you guys can be following me on the PGA Tour app and climb my way up from PGA Tour Canada to Corn Fair to PGA Tour and hopefully see my name on, on that number one at, at, on that PGA Tour app here in the next couple of years. Absolutely. And that's, that's K-U-H-L for you guys. Well, great, yeah. great golf name. Ever since I met you when you were, 
when did that when did we first meet I, were you like oh, 14 was, 15 uh, something like that i was probably uh, yeah like 15 or 16 you know when i came down to st louis to to see b photo I, I stopped over to see you and you know we create we created a great relationship and um, you know, I really respect, you know, what you and your team does over at 18 strong. Um, obviously your guys' content's great and you guys are the best in the business for a reason. So, um, I'm looking forward to working, you guys, working with you guys here in the next, you know, in the future and, um, you know, decided to build this brand because like I said, best in the business. I appreciate it, brother. And, uh, and I, I've been saying since you were 15 years old or whenever you came in, I remember telling my cousin Ryan and, uh, you know, my circle of friends, like, this kid is phenomenal, but what a great name for a golfer. Tommy Cool, like, cool uh, cool as eyes, cool under pressure. So yeah. um, we're, we're rooting for you. We're in your corner, bud, and uh, I know you're going to do great things. You're going you're gonna to do some big-time things on the PGA Tour, so we're looking, looking forward to uh, being part of that journey. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me, and, um, you know, hopefully see you soon. Absolutely. All righty. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for joining us this week on the 18 Strong Podcast with our buddy, Tommy Cool. It's going to be really fun to see him grow and see him realize his dream on the PGA Tour. If you want any more information on Tommy or this episode, just go to 18strong.com. This is episode number 349. We'll catch up again with you with another great guest next week. Train hard, practice smart, and play better golf.